give our leaders the confidence to be able to keep you in mind when making laws and uh, stop making laws that uh, go against your word. And we, we pray for patience and kindness. We pray that your help is bountiful in our hearts and around us. Help us to live in our homes. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Everybody sensing that feeling of cold? <laughs> Things came in this week a little Not bit. Not did they? And that's happening. I hope and pray that you're getting over Are there any visitors here tonight? Can't just hold on a minute. Let me see. Because I want to try to put this on for the, for the, for the guests, you know. Anybody that... I Listen, there's a lady. I hope you'll be in prayer. She may end up coming even late. Her name is Honesty. And she has a young uh, child with her, a young boy. She may be coming in a little bit late. But she just told me about a half hour ago she'd be coming. So you pray for her, okay? If there's anybody else, let us know. Any other guests, first time? Okay, all right. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. We got a guest. Fred Flintstone is here. Fred Flintstone's here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you guys. You got to have a noodle. Let me hear the best one you got. Yeah, but yeah, but yeah. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, just make sure that you make sure everyone feels welcome. Go shake hands, say hi to everyone. Don't forget to say hi to Fred while you're here. There you go. <laughs> How's it going, guys? <laughs>
by my Savior's name, salvation through His blood. I need no other arguments. I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and that He died for me. My great physician heals the sick, the lost He came to save. He actually took the plans today, the, the little, you know, artistry that I did, and he's taking that with the plans that are the actual plans for the building. And they're working through that even this afternoon they've started. And so I'm grateful for that. The work is getting finished. Uh, his idea is that by July of next year, by August of next year, we should be already doing a, a, some building. And so I'm very grateful for that. And he said it may be sooner than that. They just need to be sure. So you keep praying about that. Come on up here, Fred. Is that right. your name? Yes. Fred? Yes, Fred. Yeah. Split stone. Do you ever, do you ever yell at one? Sometimes. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, how's everybody doing tonight? Great. All right, they uh, left me out of the rock pile, so they come in here and with you people. So uh, can I have a gentleman come up for the tithes and offerings? My wife's got Dean of Socks. She's got her hair pulled down. He just kind of looks like him. Well, I should. I am him. Yeah, you are, aren't you? <laughs> Okay, I'd like to, like to read some of the word out of here about tithe and offerings. Uh, it's in Leviticus 27, starting in verse 30. And all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. And it is holy unto the Lord. Amen. And if a man will at all redeem all of his tithes, he shall add thereto the fifth part of thereof. And concerning the tithe of the herd, or of the flock, even of whatsoever passes under the, the rod, the tenants shall be holy unto the Lord. So let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for everything you do for us. We thank you for all the tithing that comes through this church, and that it builds something that makes you proud of everybody here. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
pray for Israel. Uh, as you know, there's real war going on right now. Uh, from last that we heard, uh, I, you may have some updated information. There were 1,100 people that had died in Israel, uh, as I believe of this morning. And so uh, continue to pray for the conflict. Pray for the situation that God be glorified. Tonight you're going to hear some things from the scriptures about war in Israel. We don't know that this is the war, uh, but we do know that some kind of major war takes place. And I suppose you understand, in 50 years, there's not been this bad of a war. In 50 years, they have uh, made that clear, not just on the news, but in some extra sources that are close to Israel. Uh, that because of the statistics and the way things are going, it's the worst since 1948. And so keep Okay, this is our missions emphasis time, and missionaries for this week. Um, the first ones are Josh and Jody Green. And they, <clears throat> they are our missionaries to Brazil, and they have a class um, that they're teaching. It's called Story of Hope, and uh, they need prayer um, that because there will be people that, are, that they know that are saved and people that aren't in that class as well. So they'll have both in that. And then their praise is that their uh, son, hopefully I'm pronouncing this right, Malik, is um, much better and continues to improve because I think he was previously, he was ill. So You'll that's notice we're starting to put those pictures up yeah. so you can see what missionaries we're talking about. I do like that. Put a name to the face. Yeah. And that whole face to the name. Yeah. <laughs> Our next ones are David and Jessica Vickers in Thailand, <clears throat> and they have a church plant in Utrecht, which is um, in the north central of Thailand. And many of you know I was a missionary in Thailand. I was in the south. I was on the Gulf. But um, if I ever see them, I guess we could uh, talk Thai together. Yeah. Um, and they're uh, they need help with uh, prayer for they have remaining truck payments. They have a church plant in that province that they're in. That's what Utrecht did is um and they're also covering for a missionary who was on furlough for uh, three months so covering from him and they're for him and uh their praise is that they um had a successful medical mission outreach um and that a new facility is coming online um for that church and um they are they have some christians that are serious with uh their track distribution to help them so that's a praise in that. So keep all of our missionaries in prayer. It's a blessing to be able to support them. And did everybody get a prayer sheet tonight? Okay, and uh, if you could just raise your hand if you didn't get one, and we'll make sure that those get to you. So we got a three over here, it looks like, on this side. And it looks like we had a... A couple over here, one way up here. All right. And uh, I just praise the Lord because of the people that I see here tonight that I wasn't sure about because of their health conditions and whatnot. We got one over here as well. Brother Richard needs one. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, pray for us. And then if everybody just wants to go ahead and merge into their different groups uh, to be able to pray, okay? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for the opportunity to lift up our requests to you, Lord. And uh, just whatever happens, Lord, may the glory all go to you and help us to be mindful of that as we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.
He's probably about 17 years old. Really smart kid. And I'm just praying that the Lord will bring him for baptism because he just received Christ. Uh, pray for Alexander and Gabriel. Grateful you're here, Alexander. Glad that you is bringing him more and more. God is good. And how is he doing? Is he enjoying it? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Grateful for him. And then just pray for Richard and Debbie. Also, Orlando is another one that is just coming to Jesus Christ. So it's good to see God working. Uh, just praying that the Lord will give us wisdom. Yes, Ms. Patty. Can you pray for my cousin Jenny as well? That's right. He's on the ventilator and he's just not doing well. Is he on this list? Okay, we need to put him on there. Earl, if you could, uh, most certainly. Let's just take a second and pray, especially for him. Father, uh, I do pray that you will be with Patty's family. His name's Jimmy, correct? Mm -hmm. I just pray, Father, that you will work in uh, her nephew and that you, Father, would just do a work in his body right now, that you heal him. Lord, simple prayers like this that have been uttered, just a few words. I watched you do some pretty incredible things because of that. Not because of anything we are, but because of all that you are. And we just glorify you for what you'll do. We do tonight, again, pray for Israel. We pray for all of these who need Christ, those who are still uh, very lost, struggling. And I thank you, Lord, for those that have come to Christ, those who are looking for good churches here and there. Help us, Father God, to be there for them and to love on them, to enjoy fellowship with them uh, in the future as you allow. But heal people's bodies, especially Jimmy, I pray right now. Just get him off this ventilator and help him, Father, to be able to move forward. And Lord, save that soul. Save those souls, dear Lord God, and Patty's family that may still be lost. Some, I don't know, but I know you're in control of it. Thank you, in Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to also keep in prayer the 75th anniversary. I'm going to give a few announcements later. But right now, we just finished an interview today for the Star. And we're seeing some other advertising going out here and there, spluttered here and there. And uh, just in recent days, the Lord gave us an opportunity to get $10,000 worth of Google advertising. Uh, because Google is using that as a means for tax deduction. And our church was able to take advantage of that. And so I believe that that's going to be going all over the place. Dalton, uh, what is his last name? You guys know? Uh, Christopher, where are you, buddy? Galveston, that's right. Uh, he's been helping us with this. He's a professional at doing these kinds of things. So you'll see the church in different fields, on social media and even maybe on television in uh, the days to ahead. You just keep praying that God will use those things. And stand with me if you will. And we'll continue singing him 540, no pardon, 545, yeah, all the time.
not predictable. Hey, I want you to pray about that. We need a floor manager. Oh, wow. We need a floor manager, a guy that can hear. Because uh, I, I feel weird going back and forth and looking back and saying, hey, guys, he do advance his life. So pray about that. If one of you guys out here would say, you know, I probably could do that. I'd probably help that to come together and kind of help them and help over here. and Because all you need is just a little uh, ear mic, you know. And you guys can coordinate and you can hear it out here. I've been back there and it's really hard to hear. It's hard to hear what it sounds like. Uh, so pray about that, if you will. And if one of you say, I can probably do that, I have talent with that, then that would be a great blessing, I'm sure. Hey, listen to this. Men and women's studies are tomorrow. Uh, why do we need to lead our family? Husbands, wives, what's the point in leading our family? You're going to be studying from Philemon tomorrow night. And talking about that relationship in slavery, what it means to be a slave of Jesus Christ, and the whole deal with Philemon, and why Paul had to talk with Philemon, and how that all worked out, Onesimus, and all of that, okay? But we'll be talking about that tomorrow night. Ladies have their study in the fruit of the Spirit, and then on November the 4th, first Sunday of the month, listen to this. We've got this exciting, this is really neat. They're going to be doing an evangelism thrust on that particular day and every month after that. It's called Super Saturday Evangelism. Uh, November, it says the 5th, but it should be the 4th. Sorry about that. Pizza and hot chocolate they're going to be doing. And then uh, during the whole time, the teens, the young people, they're all going out in different groups and doing different activities that day on the 4th. If you'd like to sign up, you can start with it right over here, Pastor Michael. You know about the harvest party already. Two of these pages are already full. But you see that yellow sheet on there? It says candy, candy, candy. <laughs> We've got so many people involved, probably 50 or more, that are doing booths that are going to be around that you helping with security, driving the tractor and all of that. But we haven't started working on the candy. We've got about 10 days here to work on the candy. And so we'll do that tonight, pass it around that yellow paper. Just put your name on it if you can bring, bring a bag or two of candy and then we'll know how many that we need towards the end. There's a chili cook-off also associated with that on that Friday. Some have already signed up for it. And then right here, there's a pie baking contest as well. I need a little more volume, man, I'm yelling. Uh, Brother Chris, Christopher, uh, thank you. Just a little bit more on this, if you will. Not a lot, not a lot. Okay, pie baking contest right there. I'll start it over here, and you guys can do that. The meals are doing really, really well, but there are some other things that need help with, that we need help with on the missions thing. Um, and that is working with the teenagers and working with the children on Mondays and Tuesday nights. Working with the teenagers, working on the children on Mondays and Tuesday nights. These have more to do with the food. I'll hand them out anyway. You do that side, this, this side you do. And then this one is to help make the church facilities presentable, helping with the cleaning. They've done really well with that. And this week we had some good help as well. I know that on uh, Saturday there are at least three or four. Uh, Brother uh, Martin, I know you guys are helping as well. And I appreciate that on this Saturday. So you come if you can and help with those things. Uh, all of those sign-ups you get a hold of. Let's really promote the Missions Conference. Uh, talk with your friends. Talk with your family. Tell them about what's coming up. On Sunday, you're going to get the bulletin. So you can know what's going on. And you can say to your friends, hey, let me show you what's going on. As a matter of fact, tonight, you get a little tiny representation of that. These little tiny things. And I'm going to have Christian and Nicholas come up here. Christian and Nick, if you will. And Christian, you just take this side, you take that side. And there are plenty of them. So if you want five of them or ten of them to give to friends, family, people that you know, and you want to invite them to the missions conference, take five, ten, fifteen of them. Get them out to everybody, those little representations. Listen to me real close, okay? Those are on the front and the back. There's information on the front and the back. On the front, it talks about the hayride, high gold, desserts, candy, and stuff like that. For the harvest party. And on the back, it gives you all the things that are going on through the week and shows you all the pictures of the missionaries at the bottom there. 
Gives you all the pictures of the missionaries at the bottom. The Hawkins Hernandez in the house. Bunch of H's, man. Hawkins Hernandez in the house, and you got the Smiths here, too, man. <laughs> so, what a blessing it is to see how God has already given those things uh, a go, man. They're coming together. And I'm excited because the Millmans have got some new music they're going to do. Yeah. I'm really excited about Michael's music. He sent me a copy of one of the one of the video, you know, a video of one of the things he's doing. It's really going to be pretty special music, meals, excitement for sure. Uh, and so please do the best that you can. Homecoming anniversary, that's going to be so up, so cool. Uh, what you want to do is people who, you, how many of you remember with Secret Christian Academy? All right, Seaford Christian School Academy. Those are those are the kids that were in your class. If you still got any of those numbers, get on the phone and tell them that it's homecoming. All right, seniors, juniors, people that you remember way back in the day in the '90s, in the 2000s, early on. Uh, just pick up the phone and tell them, hey, we're going to be doing this thing. We'd love to have you there, 75th anniversary, and uh, just make sure they know. There's 11 days left to pray. Also. Continue to pray, if you will, for those that are in, uh, in 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 the missions conference and all about the missions conference. Okay. Another thing I'd like you to do is just take one of those, look it over, give it to some people if you want. Brother Mike wants you come, Pastor Dave wants you come, and grab that. You can put it in people's uh, people's hands. You can send it to them through the mail. You can talk to them about it. You can look it up online and show them where to get to the 75th anniversary stuff. Any of that, okay? And so uh, let's do it. Let's do that. All right. Let's get our Bibles out if we will. What do you guys actually want to say? Miss Robin and Richard are still doing those peanuts for the Pastor Pirate thing, only a dollar. And you can also uh, talk with her about getting involved. If you want to, for the children's program in one way or or, or four. All right. I'll let you guys get settled down. Paula? Have you I have. She went and they had the funeral. And to, yeah. Yeah. At two o'clock today. But over the weekend they were planning it. She went today with uh, with a friend, and she went with Tanya as well. And they had that funeral. So you continue to keep Barbara in prayer if you want to. Keep Barbara in prayer also. Okay. Uh, most certainly. Okay. Uh, you're in Jeremiah 31 and verse 31, and you're going to start there, but we're really not going to start there. I want you just to look for a second at what Israel's future holds. Okay, looking at what Israel's future holds, but I want you to hear some things that I think will be beneficial to you before we start all that. How many of you know this phrase? History repeats itself. You've heard that, right? Yes. History repeats itself. Let me pray with you and we'll get started. Father, your word is so good, so perfect, so right. Amen. We never have to wonder about it. We never have to fret. We know that you have everything under control. We may misunderstand you. We may not get everything perfectly right. But Lord, we're grateful that your Holy Spirit is perfect. We're grateful that your word is perfect. We're grateful that you never lie to us. I'm asking that you will come with a very special hand, a very special brush of beautiful colors tonight and bring together a photo, a picture of Jesus Christ as we study the future of Israel, as we study what Israel is going through right now, as we study what we will be going through in the future, help us, Father, to think righteously and do right in you. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. My brother, when we were growing up, uh, he was known for stinky feet. <laughs> So what any of your O'Day brothers, Jeff, known for stinky feet? Were they? That's a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, I knew about the first stinky stuff, but <laughs> you know, some people do have those kinds of weird things about them. And I'm telling you, it's interesting. In our family, we didn't really have that problem early on. 
And then the adopted kids came. And I started smelling this thing, you know, and I thought, oh, it smells like feet. <laughs> and sure enough, I leaned over Dennis, and there were Jack's feet just stinking it up. By the <laughs> and it was funny, too, because some of his feet were the same way. I love just making fun of kids. <laughs> they make fun of me, too. I heard them in there in the social hall earlier. I said, you're embarrassing me. <laughs> but stinky feet are a part of our history as a family and boy I'll tell you what it all started with Brian and I thought to myself man you know I made fun of Brian when I was growing up and now the Lord is striking me because of that and I'm going through the same thing with my own kids but because history repeats itself we've got to be careful not to make wild predictions about this war okay yeah. let me say that to start with don't stay, start making wild predictions. Oh, this is the one. Oh, somebody's going to come in and they're going to create peace. And that's going to be it. And praise the Lord. Well, my friends, let's not do that. Right. I realized what my title was, but you know that was just to get you here, right? <laughs> the title was, What Does the Israeli-Palestine-Hamas War Mean? And how will it affect you? How will it affect you? Well, I don't know. It may not affect you at all. I think it probably will. I'm not sure, but it seems to me that this being the worst of times, they say in 50 years, and then I got to think in 1948, that's not 50 years. That's like 75, right? And so I'm really not sure what they mean, but in 50 years, it hasn't been this bad, they said. Now, in chapter 9 of Daniel, Daniel found himself reading from the book of Jeremiah. You understand that that happened. Even those prophets would read each other's writings uh, from age to age. And Jeremiah foretold of a 70-year period of Babylon captivity for Israel. And as soon as Daniel started reading this, the Word of God talks about his weeks and his time of uh, fasting and his moments of prayer. And this is what ended up happening. He started to weep before God. He started to be concerned about his sin. Can I tell you something? When you and I become concerned about our sin, God will start to reveal precious things to us. Amen. Mm -hmm. How many of us are concerned about our sin tonight? How many of you say, man, I really have some issues. I've got some problems. May God help me. I was telling some of the people as we were praying together before the service, I said, do you know that in groups throughout history, one person has been in sin like Achan, who stole that wedge of gold and that Babylonian garment. And what did it do? Huh? It affected everybody. Groups of people can be affected by the sin of just one. And I had a very dear, sweet, tender-hearted man come to me after that prayer service and confess what I thought to be sort of a nominal small thing, but it wasn't small to him at all. <laughs> Don't you just love that? That people are sensitive in our church, that they're convicted about their sin, that they're concerned, and he's all oh, pastors, did this happen? I just wanted you to know about it. I need prayer. Let's pray together about that. That's a good thing, you know? Yeah. Uh, is there something in your life tonight you think that might keep you from hearing from the Lord? Now, have you ever seen National Treasure, the movie National Treasure? All right, Nicholas Cage is in that movie. And some of the things you'll see in there are all these little things that go together. I was talking to Nicholas before the service. I said, you kind of look like Nicholas came off. And Keith said, no, he doesn't. He looks that guy, like that guy in the fair. It's very <laughs> you know, Nick, you got a face like everybody thinks they know, you know. <laughs> but in any case, that movie puts together all these little puzzle pieces. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? And all these little mysteries start to come together. Now, the scripture is very much like that with this particular theme. You see, when Daniel read that he confessed sin, he threw himself on the floor. He read that. He, he confessed his sin. And as he humbled himself, the angel Gabriel told him of Shiduit, Shiduit, all right, which is 77s, all right? And if you're to say that in real probably Jewish sounding words, it would be, right? They kind of, like this. So it's, you know, I can't do it right. 
and then Shevin. Shechum and Shevin. All right, 77. It's like the Western decade, except for that it's seven years instead of ten. All right, they had units of time that were sevens rather than tens. We call them decades. They call them Shizuya. All right, S H E V U I M in what we would look at it as uh, common English, and that's how it would look. 490 years were given. For Israelis, get this now, you ready? They're suffering. Let me ask you a question. Has God ever said anything that didn't come to pass? Has God ever said anything that you thought, well, that might be the case, that might not be, my friends. Is it always true when God says this is how it is? Amen. So here's what you get, all right? I think it's important because this is like Lincoln logs, okay? You guys know what Lincoln logs are, right? You take them Lincoln logs and you slap them together and they kind of they kind of link, you know what I'm saying? And so that's why you call them Lincoln logs, you know? Not just Lincoln, but because they're Lincoln, you know? <laughs> they link together. These Lincoln logs, there's one thing upon another that kept going on in these ways I want you to get. After that time, that king, who was uh, the Persian king Artaxerxes, prophesied the building, the rebuilding of Jerusalem and the cutting off or the killing of Yeshua Hamashiach. Who is Yeshua Hamashiach? Jesus Christ, our Christ. All right? 483 years. From the time that the Persian king Artaxerxes, who prophesied the building of Jerusalem, and the cutting off, the word of God actually says, of Yeshua HaMashiach. Go to Daniel chapter 9, if you will, verse 25. Daniel chapter 9, and verse 25. And we'll start there. And then there's several passages of scripture we're going to get to before we go to Jeremiah 31. But start with Daniel 9, verse 25 through 26. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem. Okay, so we already know that this is a prophecy. And that the Persian king Artaxerxes wanted to rebuild Jerusalem and actually did take place. It says here, from the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem and the Messiah, the prince shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. The streets shall be built again. And the wall, even in troubles, troublous time. Verse 26 says, And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off. Now, that's incredible, isn't it? I mean, this is a book that's written hundreds of years before Jesus is even born. And the people of the prince shall come, shall, shall come, shall, shall, let, pardon me, and the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city of the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood. Unto the end of the war, desolations are determined. Then verse 27. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. What is that? Seven years. Seven years. That's the last seven years. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause a sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abomination, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation of the term, uh, term in, that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Get and understand, Antichrist is mentioned in that verse. Antichrist will be the one that caused the abomination of desolation. Understand also that that 483 years between Artaxerxes and the death of Jesus Christ, the destruction and the cutting off of Messiah, was exact. It really happened. So the one week that's left, that's mentioned in the scriptures here, that one seven-year period of time still has not happened. Right. When is that going to take place? During the tribulation. Are you and I here? No. And I heard people say that we are. What are your thoughts on that? I'll talk to you about it in just a minute. Now, Ezekiel 7. And verses 13 through 28 shows that the time between Artaxerxes' decrees of the rebuilt Jerusalem and the death of Yeshua was exactly 483 years. The math adds up. And that leaves that seven years of tribulation. So in Daniel 9, verse 27, we see something about the ruler 
of that time. The ruler of that time, Antichrist. These verses along with Revelation chapter 11. Go there if you will. Revelation chapter 11 and verse 2. Revelation chapter 11 and verse 2. And it goes into 3. Give us understanding of the three and a half years. The court which is without the temple, leave out. Measure it not. For it giveth unto the Gentiles. And the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. How long is that? Three and a half years. And I'll give power unto my witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days, clothed in sackcloth, which is three hundred three and a half years. The second half of those seven years are going to be the worst, according to the scripture. There'll be some awful times. Go with me to chapter twelve and verse six of Revelation. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 6. Again, reaffirming just the accuracy. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 6. And the woman, woman fled into the wilderness, speaking of Israel, where she hath a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. Which is what? Three and a half years. Understand and get this, that Israel, according to the word of God, for 490 years, they're supposed to go through this tribulous time. They've been through 483. Is Israel going to go through the tribulation? Yes. Yes. It's all about it. That's exactly right. So get that. Understand. Tribulation equals Israeli pain. Okay. But protection is also afforded, which is amazing to me. It's a blessing of God. And yet you, as the church, don't. Go through that tribulation period. You say, Pastor, prove it to me. Go to Revelation chapter 4, if you will. Revelation chapter 4. Also remembering what Jesus said in Matthew 24. Also remembering what is found in 1 Timothy, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 as well. But Revelation chapter 4, if you will, right towards the end. The Word of God talks about how Jesus is thrown, all the special things that go on. Awesome things. By verse 8, you're seeing the four beasts had each of them six wings about him. There were full eyes within that rest not day, night and day, saying, Holy, holy, holy. And when those beasts give glory to and thanks to him that sat on the throne, he liveth forever and ever. The four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast down their crowns. Look at this, verse 11. And they say, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. Thou hast created all things for thy pleasure. They are and were created. Chapter 5 says, And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within, and the backside sealed with seven seals. If you go through that passage and understand what's going on, verse 9 says, They sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book, to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain, and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred, every tongue, every people, every nation. Who is singing here? Church. The church. Hey, look up here. That's the church. Yeah. Revelation chapter 2 and 3 prove that's the church. Because those seven churches were written to, and by chapter 4, they're already in heaven. And by chapter 5, they're singing glory and honor and praise to God. Yeah. You're not going through the tribulation. Everybody else on this earth is going through it. Yeah. And as you're looking at chapter 5, what does the word of God say? They're glorifying him and praising him. Why? Listen to this. Close, close. He's about to open the first seal of tribulation, which has not happened yet. And where are we? Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Say, so that's not enough for me, Pastor. Well, then you just keep on reading. Amen. And you'll find in chapter 6 that there's this evil creature. You say, well, he's on a white horse. Well, what difference does that make? You see all kinds of creeps on white horses. In verse 2 it says, I saw and behold a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow and a crown. Now, our Lord has many crowns. Our Lord has written on his vesture, the Lord of lords, King of kings, God of all God. Listen to me, my friends. This right here is Antichrist. Amen. And what is he doing? He's going forth to conquer. He's going forth to hurt. And when he opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, come. Okay, so he's going now through the tribulation. Where are we? In heaven. Go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, if you will. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. I don't mean to get sidelined on this, but I really want to make sure you understand you and I do not, do not go 
through the tribulation. First right. Thessalonians chapter 4, if you will, a word of God says, I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. All right. That you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. For we, if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. I read through Matthew 24 today. And I looked at this in comparison to Matthew 24, in comparison to what we see in Daniel, in comparison to what we see in Ezekiel, in comparison to what we see in Revelation. And it is clearer than it can be. It's just so obvious. We're not going through the tribulation. Now, how are we not going to know the time that Jesus comes back if we know the time that Jesus comes back? Right. You know, there's a whole lot of people saying, well, he's supposed to come back. But well, yeah, we know that. He's coming back to put his feet on the Mount of Olives. Right. That's the second time after tribulation. But the first time, he is in the clouds. Amen. And he works to bring us unto himself. Amen. The trumpet shall sound. And we're going up. We're not, we're not meeting to meet him here. We're meeting him in the air. Verse 15 says, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain to the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caused. You see, now, Pastor, where does it say that we're not going to go through the tribulation? Look at chapter 5, verse 8. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love. Why? Because you don't know when he's coming back. He's coming back as a chapter 5 and verse 3. Thief in the night, verse 2, pardon me. So cometh as a thief in the night. Why? Because you don't know when he's coming in verse 9. For God hath not appointed us to wrath. Amen. Let me say it again. For God hath not appointed us to wrath. Amen. Let me say it again. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, Amen. but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. If that's not enough evidence, i got to tell you what. <laughs> I can't give you another test. <laughs> it's just so very evident. Amen. Now past that, I think it's important for us to understand what's going on with Israel. Go to Jeremiah chapter 31. In Daniel 9 and verse 27, you see Antichrist. You see all the garbage going on. You see that he lifts himself up. You know that the third temple is being built. You understand that all this stuff is going on. That he's going to stand in the temple and proclaim himself as God. Israel has gone into some terrible situations here. Terrible pain. And then Jesus Christ will come at the end of that seven year period of time. Because they have to go through it. The Word of God says there's seven years left for them to go through. And at the end of that time, He will bring them unto Himself. Amen. You say, now, Pastor, where is that? Well, look with me at Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 31. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel. If you read through Jeremiah, you'll read through what Daniel read through. It's what brought Daniel to his knees. It's what caused him for three weeks to cry and pray and weep. And Gabriel came and expressed all these things to him. Talked to him about these 490 years. It says in verse 32, Not according to the covenant that I made with your fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break. Although I was a husband unto them, saith the Lord. But this shall be the covenant. Whoa, look at this now. That I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, after the tribulation, after those awful things, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people and they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother. They won't need to anymore. Why? Because they'll know him. The word of God says, they shall all know me. From the least of them unto the greatest of them, verse 34, saith the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. And there is a day, the scripture tells us very clearly, that every Israeli alive at that time will fall to their knees and realize that Jesus Christ is he who they pierced. And they will all be saved in a single day. The concern of my heart. David Jeremiah expresses this. My father has expressed this in his Sunday school class as well. Is that two-thirds of the earth's population will die in that seven-day period of time. Five billion people. I'll tell you what, those are not the greatest of chances. 
I wouldn't be waiting around to, to bow the knee. I would do it now. Amen. So now, bow your head. So what does that war have to do with anything, Pastor? I don't know. But the Bible does tell us in that one passage of Scripture that there'll be some war in which Israel will need a savior or a broker. And that broker will broker peace. And whoever that broker of peace is, is Antichrist. And so if that starts to happen during this time, you guys better sit up and pay attention because we're about to go home. Amen. Amen. Can I tell you with all certainty that this could start to happen before the rapture, but not the tribulation? Yes. Does that make clear? Everybody? Those are the exact things that we know. And the scripture is clear. Would you stand to your feet?